Less than a year after the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, the U.S. Air Force wanted to land a man on the moon, and it even had a plan. The Man in Space program is today on Vintage Space. The U.S. Air Force assumed that since it was in the business of flying through the air, it would soon be the leader in the business of flying through space. As such, it wasted no time in the wake of Sputnik and in the spring of 1958 had developed a full plan to land men on the moon by 1965. The program was a four-phase program. The first phase was called Man in Space Soonness, which, as the name suggests, was a plan designed to get a man in space as quickly as possible. Through robotic and then manned orbital flights, the idea was just to gather information and understanding about how men would live and work in space, and also how to bring them back safely because no one had done this at the time. The second phase, Man in Space Sophisticated, would pioneer a much larger and more sophisticated spacecraft, one that could keep men aloft for up to two weeks because that was roughly the time it would take to go to the moon and come back. The first phase would be robotic and animal flights in Earth orbit with this new spacecraft, and the second phase would take advantage of larger boosters to send that same spacecraft, still without a human pilot, way far away from the planet. The goal was to get the spacecraft to go as far as 40,000 miles from the Earth, so that when it returned, it would do so at speeds equivalent to returning from the Moon. The third phase, Manned in Space Sophisticated 3, would be the first to have a human pilot in the spacecraft, and for the first time he would leave the safety of the spacecraft in orbit to perform an EVA. The next phase of the program was called LURIC for Lunar Reconnaissance. This was an all-robotic phase designed to just explore the moon through a series of increasingly complicated missions culminating with a soft landing on the moon's surface. Manned Lunar Flight, or LUMEN, was the final phase in this four-phase program. Lumen 1 called for animal flights around the moon to verify that the hardware, computer, and life support systems were up to the task. Lumen 2 would do the exact same thing, but with humans on board. Lumen 3 would see an unmanned spacecraft land on the moon, and Lumen 4 would complete the goal of returning that spacecraft from the moon's surface. This way, every piece of the puzzle would be in place. The first attempt at a manned lunar landing would come with the Lumen 5 stage. The last two stages of this final phase, Lumen 6 and Lumen 7, would see additional landed and orbital missions fly with increasingly sophisticated scientific instruments with the goal of better understanding the moon and its environment. The Air Force anticipated that the Man in Space program on the whole would cost about $1.5 billion and would get that man on the moon's surface by 1965 if it started as soon as possible. The ideal start date for the program was listed in the proposal in 1958 as July 1st of that year. As we know, the program never got off the ground, because in October of 1958, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the NASA that we know and love today, was established and opened for business. NASA's Mercury program was equivalent to the Air Force's Man in Space Soonest program Program, and from there, NASA just took the reins of everything in space because it is, after all, the space agency. The Air Force was left playing a supporting role. For more about this man in space proposal, including details on the spacecraft timelines and details about the stages of each phase, check out the latest article over on Vintage Space at Popular Science. I've got a very long article over there with all the information that you may or may not want to know. And to understand a little bit more about how the man in space program fits into the greater whole of everything crazy that was going on in 1957 and 1958, be sure to check out my brand new book, Breaking the Chains of Gravity, which is coming out in the United States and Canada on January 12th of 2016, and is already out in stores in the UK, and you can pre-order it on Amazon or buy a signed hardback copy from my website. All of those links and information is in the description below if you need to look at it later. So what do you guys think about the Man in Space program? And more interestingly, what do you think might have happened if the Air Force had gotten the go to go to the moon with the Man in Space program instead of NASA, the civilian agency, doing the same thing? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and of course, your questions and ideas that you would like to see covered in future episodes. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as at AST Vintage Space for daily Vintage Space content. And with a new video going up every single week, be sure to subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.